Hello, welcome to another video. So today we're going to take a look at another swim teacher's video on how to swim in five minutes. I've never seen this video before, but uh, I have seen this particular guy in action. And uh, I'm going to give you my honest opinion on what he suggests you should do as a beginner swimmer. So let's take a look. Here we go. Hey, Christian, how are you? How are you, Baptiste? Fine. What are we going to do today? Uh, today we're going to have five minutes to show everybody how you can learn how to be relaxed in the water and to float and to swim by yourself. And the first thing I notice is that he's not wearing a swim cap, okay? I don't care who you are, be a role model, wear a swim cap, okay? There's a reason why we wear swim caps in pools, because we want to keep our hair nice and tidy, but also for hygiene purposes, okay? We don't want hair flying into the water, you know, dead hairs, and that's the reason why we wear a swim cap, actually so we can prevent all this dead hair from floating on the surface of the water and then you accidentally <laughs> suck it up while you, when you're blowing your bubbles. I take a big breath and I blow bubbles. Yeah, I agree. Um, he recommends that you start off in the shallow end. I always start my students off in the shallow end. Never throw your student off into the deep end on day one, the first month or so, okay? They're just not ready, okay? It's like uh, trying to take a student driver onto the highway for the first lesson, okay? So start with the shallow water, I agree. Now, as for blowing bubbles in the shallow end, what I recommend for insurance, because for a, a newbie, it's very scary for the first time. So what I recommend doing is the student grabs onto the wall as they lower their face into the water. And I start off with the chin first, just baby steps, chin, sinking into the water okay this alone is very scary for a beginner swimmer you would not believe and then just the mouth blowing the bubble so the nose is breathing in the air just practice this okay do this like 20 times repetition just muscle memory and then when they're comfortable then they graduate onto the nose okay mouth and nose is in the water and then their eyes are out of the water like this and obviously the student's wearing goggles so he's wearing goggles that's good and then once they, they're comfortable with this, after like 20 or more repetitions, and then they sink their eyes. And you notice that the hair is still dry, or the head, okay? And they, your student should be wearing a swim cap, okay? Practice good hygiene. And then eventually, submerge the whole head just above the surface of the water. And then eventually try to go deeper and deeper by squatting lower into the shallow end. Awesome. If I can do my bubbles for five seconds underwater, Blowing from my mouth or blowing from my nose without any stress and looking everywhere, it's perfect. Okay, so blowing through the mouth or the nose. I get this question so many times. Which one should I use, Justin? Okay, let's break it down. Very simple, okay? If you do two things at once, you're going to fail in the beginning. If you do one thing at once, you're most likely to succeed. So the answer is start by blowing bubbles with your mouth, okay? Kids do it. If I tell like a little kid, okay, blow your bubbles through your mouth and your nose, they're not going to get it. It's too complicated in the beginning. In the beginning, I recommend all students, they blow bubbles through their mouth. Okay, just focus on the mouth first. And when they get comfortable, the natu naturally the nose will also be incorporated, okay? All right, so, but that takes time. So start with the mouth. Things, I will try to go deeper with my head blowing bubbles. And at some point, I will just let my feet go higher and I will feel I can float. What? <laughs> That's uh, pretty scary for a beginner, okay? I would not recommend this because, uh, first of all, being underneath the water for the first time is like being in sp outer space, okay? You don't know what the hell is going on as a beginner, all right? So that's why I recommend the student grabs onto the wall, the ledge, while they dunk their face slowly into the water using progressions in the beginning, okay? That alone can take one session for some students because they're that scared, they're that traumatized from, from the past, from their childhood, okay? So, grab onto the ledge. Floating, same thing. Same thing applies. You need that safety blanket, okay? And that safety blanket is the ledge. Student holds onto the ledge and then tries to lift one leg up. And then when they're comfortable with one leg out of, up, then two legs. When you're trying to float 
on the surface of the water. It depends on your buoyancy. Obviously, if you have a lot of muscle like me, you're going to sink. Okay, if you have a lot of fat, you're, you're most likely to float better than me. So don't expect anybody to just like ping, float like a starfish on the surface of the water on the day one. Okay, let's try one more time. Relax. I don't know why this guy is smiling underneath the water, okay? I don't encourage my students to smile. I encourage them to blow the bubbles using their mouth. Okay, so how do I encourage my students to blow the bubbles? Take your finger and your index finger, make a circle like this. Put it onto your mouth. Make your mouth as big as a circle. Focus on oh, making that sound. Do you hear that sound? Not oh, make a oh. That deep sound resonates from down from your diaphragm. That means you have to take a deep breath. Uh, and you try to make that sound underneath the water. Uh, but the bubbles blah, 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 combine, it's gonna make that sound. So this guy recommends blowing bubbles, but you can see he's blowing bubbles through his nose and smiling, which is stupid, okay? You got to blow your bubbles through your mouth in the beginning. Like I said, it's hard for people to learn to blow through their nose, okay? Why? Because they don't, they've never used their nose in this capacity of being underneath the water and just exhaling, okay? Naturally, naturally, we inhale through the nose. So that's a habit we have to get rid of when we start learning how to swim because that first session, when a student goes underneath the water, they blow bubbles through their nose and then automatically their brain says, tells them, inhale through the nose as well because they've done it on dry land for their entire life. They snort all that water up to their, that pool water up to their nasal cavity. They get that wasabi sensation and they hate swimming for the rest of their lives. So, so I will just do the same things and I will glide forward. Okay, now he's going into front glides, which I do not recommend doing on your own as a beginner. Why? Because you have nothing to hold on to. You need a safety blanket in the beginning, okay? That safety blanket is the ledge, like I said. Now, if you're going to try to do a front glide, like what this guy's doing, you should do two things. Do it with your instructor holding your hands out in front of you, or do it with a kickboard, okay? When you have a kickboard, that kickboard is something that you grab onto, you push down, and it just keeps you afloat. Take a deep breath, blow your bubbles, and let yourself fly away. Okay, so he's trying to perform a front glide. And for a beginner, that's not how you really want to do it. Why? Because you have nothing to push off of. Okay, he's he's in the middle of the pool, the shallow end, and he, he just goes down, smiles, and then he just moves towards the ledge. It should be the opposite, the reverse. You start from the ledge, the wall. You sink down, and then you push off the wall. The wall will give you the speed that you need in order to front glide, okay? It's really hard to front glide when you're, you don't have nothing to push off of. The tiger, we can call it the tiger. Okay, we're gonna paddle with the hands after the bubbles. Let's try. I bring my head up, I breathe, and I repeat. God, this is doing three things at once now. Doing your breathing, doing your arms, and doing your legs. In a doggy paddle. I, I never really teach doggy paddle to students. I don't know why he's teaching that. A doggy paddle is something you do for fun. If you're in uh, proper swimming lessons, they don't teach you doggy paddle. So, I don't know why he's doing it. Okay, all of this stuff I do not recommend doing on day one if you're a beginner. Using your arms and legs and blowing your bubbles. Three things at once, it's just too much, okay? It's information overload. First of all, get comfortable blowing your bubbles, all right? We have, to, we have established that first, okay? If you're not comfortable blowing your bubbles, you shouldn't be moving around in the water, okay? Learn how the breathing works first. If you are going to do glides, hold on to a kickboard or hold on to your instructor. Uh, don't incorporate arms, not for like the first week or so, I'm serious, okay? Starts with breathing, next is the kicking, 
and then finally it's the arms. It's actually very simple. With your legs, try to keep your legs on the top of the water by kicking on the surface. Okay, we're gonna cross together. Easier said than done. Okay, so <clears throat> he's rushing too much. Okay, I've said it before. Start slow, start with the breathing, then the legs and the arms, okay? He didn't even teach you how to kick yet, and he's telling you to kick and use your arms and come up on the water surface like this. It's a lot to learn, okay? So if you get frustrated, don't be surprised. Smile. What the? Oh, okay. So you can see his head position is looking forward. We never look forward when we do what he's doing. Uh, he's trying to do some sort of front crawl doggy paddle technique we look down whenever we do a front crawl technique and I don't know why this guy smiles so much okay so <clears throat> that's the end of his lesson so here's what I think he's a nice teacher nice guy all right he's he looks very uh, friendly but his intentions are like to give you a whole pile of things to do in five minutes which is just too much for anybody to to do <laughs> okay so eventually his his final result is you doing underwater doggy paddle smiling at the camera you start with the breathing first okay get comfortable breathing with your mouth okay this can take a day it can take a week for some people okay it's like learning a new language it's learning how to breathe a breathing technique that you've never learned before in your entire life okay so it, sometimes it just it takes time to learn and then after you can get comfortable getting this consistent the breathing all right which is what you need this is your engine okay your engine needs to be running efficiently then you can start doing front glides then you can start doing whatever he was trying to do but you do it assisted okay you start with the kickboard or you're holding on to your instructor to each his own, okay? So, if you really want to learn how to swim, download my ebook, okay? The ebook is going to give you a better understanding of this alien world of swimming. Get that book first, okay? It's free, it's yours to read and enjoy. I wrote the book, okay? It will give you a head start for this summer, 2022. And uh, yeah, you go, go from there, and uh, yeah, just keep watching my videos, okay? Subscribe. As always, like, leave a like, and uh, thanks for watching, okay? My name's Justin. Take care. Bye!